Hello and welcome back. In the last video we ended off with us being able to identify SATA and SATA PI drives and in this video we're going to be able to create some read commands so that we can read from the disks. Alright, let's get started. Just one thing before we get any further, we need to return get index and not just call get index. That's a silly mistake that I made. I can't believe I made that. Alright, now that we can probe the ports, let's create a class to contain the port and all of the information that it needs. So in ahci.h, we can go down to above our ahci driver and create a new class. And we can call that port. Make sure we put the semicolon and the public keyword. And this port can store a pointer to its own HBA port. So, so HBA port pointer HBA port. We can also store a port type variable to keep track of what type of port it is. We can also create a pointer to a uint8 which will be the buffer, the DMA, the direct memory access buffer that this port will put its data into when we issue, issue some commands. And we can also store a uint8 port number, which is the number of this port that we attained when we probed through all of the ports. So if it is the third port, then this port number will be three. Now that we have that, we can add an array of ports to our AHCR driver. So we can have 32 ports. So let's create a 32 sized port array. So port pointer ports of size 32. We can store it as a pointer so that we can dynamically allocate these classes and then store the pointer to it. Or we can just store the direct class as it is. But if we do it dynamically, then we will waste less memory because we'll only allocate the memory that we need for the ports that we're actually using. Then we need a uint8 port count. And this port count is how many ports that are contained inside of this port pointer array. Right, now back over in ahci.cpp, we can create some ports and put it into our port array. So we can do if port type equals port type SATA or port type equals port type SATA PI then we can do ports port count equals new port then we can set the ports port count port type equals port type we can set ports port count hba port equals equals the memory address of the a bars ports indexed by i and then we can set the ports port number to the port count and then increment the port count all right so now that we have that, we can just test that and see if our new keyword is working properly. We might need to include our heap.h. So include dot dot forward slash memory forward slash heap.h. And now we can test that and see if our dynamic allocation is working. All right, so as you can see, it hasn't crashed, so everything's working fine. All right, so now that we have an array of ports that we can use, we can actually do something with them. So we need to configure all these ports to set up things like the direct memory address and stuff like that. So let's do that now. So now we can do for int i equals zero, i less than port count i plus plus. And then we can get a port pointer port equals ports indexed by i. And then just to make sure everything's linked up properly, we can print the port type. So, and we can do the same with SATA pi. All right, so as you can see, it's working fine. SATA and SATA PI, so our dynamically allocated ports are working. So now, let's do the configuration of the ports. So we can get rid of all of this, unless you want to keep that in. I'm just going to get rid of that. And then we can do port.configure. We need to set this function up. So back in ahci.h, we can create a void configure. And then above the constructor that we're working in, we can create the port colon colon configure function which will be called from here and this also needs to be a void 
All right, so the first thing we need to do when configuring the ports is to make sure that it is not sending any commands. So we need to create a stop command and a start command function. So we can create like port colon colon stop command and void port colon colon start command. Then in ahci.h, in our port class, we need to add those functions. So void start command and void stop command. Right, now back over in ahci.cpp, let's implement those functions. We'll start with start command because that's a little bit easier. So we can do like while hba port command and status and a specific value. So we're looking for the 0x8000 bit, which is the 16th bit. So while that is set, we can't start the command because it's doing something. Now we can put this into a define. So at the top of ahcr.cpp, we can create define hba underscore pxcmd underscore c r 0x8000. Then we can copy that in, paste that in, and move along. As soon as it gets out of this loop, we are able to start the port. So we can now do hba port command and status or equals, and we need two more defines. So let's create those now. So we have define hba underscore pxcmd underscore fre. And this one is 0x0010. And we have one more define hba underscore pxcmd underscore st. And this one is 0x0001. Right. Now back down in our function, we can do or equals hba underscore pxcmd fre. And then we can do hba port command and status or equals hba underscore pxcmd st. So here in the specification, we can see inside of the command and status register, we have all of these bits that we can set. The ones we're setting are the start, so the ST, and we're also setting the FRE, the FIS receive enable. Inside of the while loop, we are checking for this command list running bit. So if the command list is running, then we should wait for it to complete before doing anything. All right, so now that we have that, we can move on to writing the stop command function. So this one's quite similar. So we can do hba port command and status and equals not hba pxcmd st. So we're setting that start bit off and then we need to do the same with the fis bit. So we'll do not hba pxcmd fre which stops it from receiving fis. Now we need to wait until it has actually stopped the command. So while true if hba port command and status and hba pxcmd and we need a new define so this one is fr and this one is 4000 so we'll choose that fr define so if it is true this evaluation if it is true then we can continue if the hba port command and status bit the the cr bit so and hba b x c m d c r then we need to continue as well so these continues will just keep it in the loop but if neither of those are true then we can break all right now we have the stop and start commands so inside of the configure function at the start we need to call stop command and at the end we need to call start command all right now we can actually start configuring the port so the first thing we need is a region of memory for the command list. Now everything to do with AHCI is done in physical memory instead of virtual memory. So having all of that physical memory region virtual memory mapped is really going to help us here. So we can get a block of memories just like this. Void new base equals global allocator dot request page. And of course we need to include our page table allocator include dot dot forward slash paging forward slash page frame alligator so now we can do that and now we need to set the command list base so we can do d reference unit 64 t pointer hba port command list base equals cursor to a unit 32 cursor to a unit 64 new base 
And now we need to mem set the entire command list to zero. So mem set void pointer hba port hba port command list base zero one zero two four. All right, so we've created our command list base, applied it to the hba port, and mem set it all to zero. All right, so now we need a chunk of memory for the fis. So we need to do void pointer fis base equals global allocator dot request page. Then we need to do the hba port fis base address equals cursor to a uint 32 cursor to a uint 64 fis base now obviously i'm only setting up the lower 32 bits of the base address so we we'll need to go back through and fix up the upper address as well so now we need to memset the entire chunk of memory that we allocated to zero so memset memset the fis base 0 256 so the fis base is only 256 however we can just request a page for it, which is really simple because it needs to be a 256 byte aligned address. So just for convenience, we're wasting a little bit of memory, but that's okay, it's not much. All right, now let's set up the upper limit of the command base upper. This should also be 32 Ts, not 64. Actually, we don't need these casts here at all. So the command list base upper equals casted to a uint 64, and we need to shift this to the right by 32. Now we can copy that there, paste that in, and change this to FIS base upper instead of command list base upper, and change this new base to FIS base. All right. Now that we have the command list memory and the FIS base memory set up, we are going to need to define a new struct called the host bus adapter command header. So over in ahci.h, we can create a new struct, hba command header. And this is using quite a lot of bit fields, which is fine. So uh, the first one is a uint8 command fis length, and this takes up five bits. Then we have uint8 atapi, which takes up one bit. Then we have write, which takes up one bit. uint8 prefetchable, which takes up one bit. Then uint8 reset, one bit. uint8 BIST one bit, uint8 clear busy one bit, uint8 reserved zero one bit, uint8 port multiplier takes up four bits. Then we have the uint16 prdt length, uint32 t prdb count, uint32 t command table base address. Then we can copy that one because we need the base address upper and then you went 32t reserved one this is an array of size four <clears throat> all right so before you continue just make sure you get that struct correct because any single value misplaced will cause an error all right now that we have that we need to set up some command headers so we can create a pointer hba command header pointer command header equals caster to a hba command header pointer hba port command list base and of course we need the command list base plus the command list upper so we need to cast this to a uint 64t and then add brackets caster to a uint 64t hba port command list upper but shift it to the left by 32. now we can do a for loop through 32 command headers. So for int i equals zero, i less than 32, i plus plus. Now we can do the command header indexed by i dot prdt length. Now before any, we go any further, let's just see what the prdt is because I've been saying it a lot and haven't explained it. So if we just search up prdt in the spec, then we see it's the physical region descriptor table. The physical region descriptor table just contains some information about like uh, database address and stuff like that. It's a pretty simple struct actually. So, so the prdt length equals eight, meaning we can have p eight prdt entries per command table. Now we need to request a chunk of memory for our command table address. So void cmd table address equals global allocator dot request page. All right, now we need to calculate the memory address of the command table. So we'll do it as a uint64 address equals command table address, 
cursor to a uint 32t, uh, uint 64t, and then we need to plus bracket i bit shifted to the left by 8. Then we can set up the command table base address. So command header indexed by i dot command table base address equals cursor to a uint 32t command table address. Then we can set up the upper. So it equals cursor to a uint 64t command table address bit shifted to the right by 32. All right, now we need to memset the command table base address. So memset command table address 0, 0256. Right, now that we have that, we can configure the port. Let's run that and see if it crashes. If not, we've done everything correctly. Uh, we have an error. So cast from void pointer to uint32t not valid. So we just need to cast it to a uint64 before going to a uint32. Alright, so as you can see, it says AHCI driver instance initialized, so everything's working just fine. Now that the port is set up, we can actually issue some commands. So we need to make a few more structs, and then we need to make some commands, send it to the port, and voila, it will be complete. We will be able to read from the drive. I reckon that'll be it for this video. In the next video, I will show you how to perform a read and a write. I know this video was meant to be about that, but it's gone on for a bit longer than I wanted it to, so that will be in the next video. Alright, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Just wanted to say a quick thank you to my patrons, thank you to my tier 3 patrons Rizzit and Kevin++, thank you to my tier 2 patrons Bobby Addison, Coffee Pot, Cole Fordorado, Cyrus Hilliard, Daniel Cosper, Daniel Solov, Dual Chem, Exceeded, Jim Borden, John M, Mad Max++, Michael Bush, Mike Atkinson, Sunsea, and thank you to my T1 patrons, David Gonzalez, Justin, Kenneth Looney, and THXTNT The Gamer.